So far, we have studied qu uh, classical physics, classical mechanics, and in uh, uh, we uh, also we introduced uh, new tools and concepts like uh, stationary action principle and uh, uh, Lagrange equations. We did nothing new, really. It was just the usual classical mechanics, and everything we did was entirely equivalent to Newton's law. Um, now we are really going to introduce uh, something uh, completely new, which is uh, quantum physics. And uh, we will see all its um, mind-blowing uh, applications uh, in future years. But uh, for today, we will follow not the historical approach and the how quantum physics was introduced uh, in the 20th century. Uh, instead, we will uh, take a more recent um, uh, perspective which was essentially uh, introduced by Richard Feynman. And uh, it's more like the latest version of quantum mechanics uh, we have, if you want. It comes from, uh, um, it was developed at in the 1940s while all the uh, standard classical mechanics was mostly developed in the uh, 1920s. First, let me review some uh, basic concept of classical probability. So we will consider, say, an object like a ball. We let fall under gravity and it can um, uh, uh, go through one hole. Say we have, a cup, we have two holes and it can go in either one of the two holes and then fall on the ground uh, at a different possible position. And we, we are interested to calculate what are the probabilities uh, to find uh, the ball at the different position on the ground. So let's label the initial position of the ball as A. The possible values of the uh, position for the holes as B and the uh, possible values of the final position on the ground as C. Of course, I have two possible ways to go from A to C because I have two holes in B. So uh, I will have to calculate uh, the probability um, to go first from A to each of the hole in B, and then the probability to go from each of the hole in B uh, to C. And the final probability P um, to go from A to C will be the sum of the probability associated with each of these two paths. If you wonder why we multiply the probabilities uh, p from a to b times p from b to c, think of a simple experiment where you toss uh, a coin twice and you want to find the probability to find uh, heads uh, twice. So the first time you toss a coin, you have a probability one half to get heads, and the second time you have another probability one half. So the total probability to get um, uh, heads twice will be one half times one half. Now coming back to our ball um, falling from A to C and going via one of the two holes in B, we see that we have to sum uh, over the two possibilities to for the ball to be uh, in B. So it can go on the left hole or on the right hole. So if I label the um, uh, position of uh, in C by a coordinate x, I uh, will expect the distribution of probabilities which will evolve smoothly uh, according to x, maybe something like that. But if you do now the experiment with a small particle, for instance an electron, uh, an atom, a molecule, or even a photon, which is a particle of light, um, what you will see is a different um, distribution of probability which will os oscillate with x. So this is quite puzzling. Um, you may say that maybe the individual probabilities p from a to b and p from b to c are themselves oscillating rapidly and are responsible for these oscillations of the probability. However, a simple experiment is simply to block one of the holes and what you will find then is something which looks like the classical probabilities I've reported here in black. So uh, it, the individual probabilities do not oscillate themselves. So there is something wrong about this equation we wrote for classical probability uh, when we go to the quantum case for particles like electrons, atom, molecules, photons, etc.